Well, Yahweh bless you. We're ready to do a, a teaching on the fidelity to Yahweh and to Yahushua. This is what I'm going to turn off a to turn off the fan. Makes a little too much noise. <clears throat> Should have done that with Elijah. Got that was on. Okay, back to the teaching on the fidelity to Yahweh and Yahushua. Fidelity comes from the word faith or faithfulness. And so fidelity is something very important with our communication and our relationship with Yahweh and Yahushua. Today, in the United States at least, and probably throughout much of the country, fidelity is not what it used to be. When you're talking about covenant, oaths, thou, has said, when somebody says, I'm going to be someplace or I'm going to do something, many people don't honor what they say. And that means the word doesn't mean anything. Or if they promise in marriage, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do these marriage vows, and then a year's time, they say, no, I'm not going to do those anymore. That means that's unfaithfulness, infidelity. So Yahweh is going to show, we're going to go through some testimonies to show you what Yahweh says about fidelity and infidelity. We're supposed to have a relationship with Yahweh, and he's the only one who is at the top tier. That's it. <clears throat> the world's going to try to take our attention away from that, to say, well, I want some of that affection away from Yahweh. And that's what generally happens. And so uh, we're going to find out what, this, what Israel did and Judah. So we're going to Ezekiel chapter 16, page 798. So this is kind of the fall. So when Ezekiel is being written, Israel, the ten tribes, have already fallen about 150 years before that. Judah is now at the last falling. So that Ezekiel is a prophet who was speaking during the times of Jeremiah, Daniel. Uh, so we go to chapter 16. And we're going to see what Yahweh says. And, and he's going to address us or people as a wife or, or a woman. <clears throat> and right at the top, you see on chapter 16, Jerusalem's infidelity under the figure of an adulteress is graphically portrayed. And obviously men are just as much as adulterous or harlots than women, and probably even more so many times is uh, in, our, in our society or in all culture. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, let Jerusalem know her abominations. Therefore shalt thou say, Thus saith my Lord Yahweh to Jerusalem, Thine origin and thy birth were of the land of the Canaanites. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother a Hittite. So these are all insults. So if you don't realize, being related to a Hittite or Amorite or Canaanite is... Bad thing. You're, you're, you're slum. And as for thy birth, in the day thou was born, thy navel cord was not cut, and in water was thou not bathed to cleanse thee, and as for being salted, thou was not salted, and as for being bandaged, thou was not bandaged. No eye threw a shield over thee, by doing for thee one of these things, taking pity on thee, but thou was cast out on the face of the field, because thy person was abhorred in the day thou was born. That's a pretty good picture of somebody who is in need of help. And that's each one of us. Each one of us, Yahweh is going to take us. When we've been cast away, he's going to clothe us in righteousness, which we start seeing. And I passed by and looked upon thee, thrusting about in thy blood, and said to thee, Despite thy blood live. Yea, I have said to thee, Despite thy blood live. Okay, Melania, read 7, and I'll tell you what to stop. Into myriads, like the bud of the field, made I thee. And thou didst increase and become well. Rome, and didst attain the most excellent adornments. Thy breasts were well formed, and thy hair was grown, but thou thyself was utterly wait, naked. Yeah, naked. And I passed by thee, and looked upon thee, and lo, thy time was thy time for endearments. So I spread my s 
skirt over thee and covered thy shame, and took an oath to thee and entered into covenant with thee, declared my Lord Yahweh, and thou didst become mine. Now that's very important. There's a covenant that you entered into and you became mine. We're, we're a couple right now. And I bathed thee in water, and rinsed thy blood from off of thee, and anointed thee with oil, and clothed thee with an embroidered dress, and sandaled thee in red leather, and wrapped thee about with fine linen, and put over thee a mantle of silk. Then decked I thee with ornaments, and put braces upon thy hand, and a neck chain upon thy throat. I put a nose jewel upon thy nose, an earring in thy ear, and a crown of adorn upon thy head. Thou wast th thus was thou adorned with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of the fine linen and silk and embroidered work, fine flour and honey and oil didst thou eat. And so thou became exceedingly beautiful and didst attain unto royalty. What a great deliverance and salvation. Then went forth thy fame among the nations for all thy beauty, for perfect it was in my splendor, which I had put upon thee, declareth my Lord Yahweh. Now we're going to, you know, as you can realize, I think there's going to be a second part to this story. We've been built up. What were you? You're a baby flopping around in blood that nobody wanted when you were born. I cleaned you up. I did all this. And now you're a woman. You're all decked out in all the cost of this thing. You've got everything that you'd ever want. But we find out that's, that something's going to go bad now. We go to uh, verse 29. And when do you want to read 29 to 35? Thou didst therefore cause thine unchaste ways to abound unto the land of Canaan as towards Chaldea. Yet even herewith wast thou not satisfied. How weak was thy heart, exclaimeth my Lord Yahweh, that thou d couldst have done all these things, the doing of a lewd woman without shame that thou couldst have built thy brothel at the head of every road, and thy height... You know what a brothel is? So a brothel is a, a place where <coughs> uh, women, and probably men too, would set up a shop to do sexual favors for pay. And so they're called prostitutes today. But that's what a brothel is. Go ahead. And thy height couldst have made in every Broadway, yet becamest not as a harlot to lay claim to a harlot's hire. So a person, a harlot, or somebody got paid for these sexual services. A wife who committeth adultery instead of her husband except as strangers. To all harlots they give a present, but thou didst give thy presents to all thy lovers, and didst bribe them to come in unto thee from every side in thine unchastity. So there came about in thee the reverse of women in thine unchastity, and that thou did not follow thee for purposes of lewdness. They did not follow thee for purposes of lewdness. And in that thou gavest a present, while well, no present was given to her. So didst thou become the reverse. 35. So she paid people to do that. Yeah, so instead of being paid for it, she actually paid people. So this is how bad a person has got. Therefore, O harlot, hear thou the word of Yahweh. There you go. Therefore, O harlot. So that's a figure of speech. Now he's talking to a tribe. Yeah, he's talking about to uh, Judah and Israel. <coughs> the people he made a covenant with. <coughs> the fidelity that they had has been broken. And this is what you call infidelity. Are they worshiping Yahweh anymore? No. no. Have they turned their back on Yahweh, mm -hmm. who gave them everything else? They were tempted and they turned their back on. So now we go to chapter 23, same book. And actually all of chapter 16 deals with this. If you want to keep going, we just don't have the time. And all of chapter 23 deals with this. It's going to get a little more detail. Okay, Elijah, you want to do the first five verses? Mm -hmm. And and the word is Ahola. You're going to see, well, I'll let you wait till you get to it. Uh, one through five. Of Ohaliba and Ohala. In the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, two women, daughters of my own mother, were there. And they became unchaste in Egypt, and their youth became unchaste. Their 
were hanging on their breasts, and they were given press to their virgin bosoms, and their names were Ola, the elder, and Ola Ba, her sister, and became mine and, and bare sons and daughters. As for their names, <coughs> Samaria was Ola, and Jerusalem was Olaba. Then became Ola, unchaste after she had become mine, and lusted after her lovers for Assyrians so warlike. Clothed in blue, governors and deputies, attracted young men, all of them horsemen riding on horses. So they got distracted, right? And now they're looking at the Assyrians. The Assyrians were so bad that they would cut people's noses and ears off just to make sure they were afraid of them. This is what Assyrians do. And they burned their children. Yeah, I'm mean, just horrible people. So she besought her unchastity unto them, bestowed her unchastities unto them, the choice of the men of Assyria, all of them, and with whomsoever she lusted after with all her manufactured gods, she defiled herself <coughs> and her unchaste doings from the time she was in Egypt, had she not forsaken, for with her had they lain in her youth, yea, they had pressed her virgin bosoms and had poured out their unchastity upon her. Okay, Esther, read 9 and 10. <clears throat> Therefore did I deliver her unto the hand of her lovers, to the hand of the sons of Assyria, after, after whom she lusted, they disclosed her, disclosed. Exclosed her, saying, Her sons and her daughters took they away, and herself with the sword they slew. Well, how did these lovers turn out? <laughs> they killed her. And stole her children. Yeah, stole her children. They took all her property. And who did you leave? You left Yahweh for this. Yes. We, yeah. And go ahead. We'll, we'll just go ahead and skip uh, Isaiah 11 to 15. Okay. And and thought his sister Olaba. Now that's Judah. So we know Jerusalem and Samaria is gone. And now we're talking about what her sister's going to do. No, Olaba saw yet become she more corrupt in her lust than the other. And the unchaste doing exceeded in unchaste doing of her sister. After the son of Assyria she lusted, governors and deputies so warlike, clothed in splendid array, horsemen riding on horsemen, attractive young men, young men all of them. So I saw that she defended herself. One way she had both. Yet did she add unto her unchaste doing when she saw men portrayed upon the wall likeness of Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, vermilion girded with, with waist cloth upon the lawns with overhanging high turbans upon their heads like in appearance knights of all them the likeness of the sons of Balon of Chaldea, the land of their birth. Then lusted she after them, as soon as her eyes beheld them, and she went and sent messengers unto them to Chaldea. Then came her, then came in unto her the sons of Babylon into the bed of endearment, and defiled her with her unchaste doing. She defiled herself with them, and then was her soul torn from them. Thus he closed she her unchaste desires and it closed her shame. So my soul was torn from me. Isn't that neat? So uh, Yahweh torn saying, from her. <clears throat> yeah, so my soul was torn from her just as my soul had been torn from her sister. This is Yahweh in relationship. And the United States has gone through this all the time. And what we're saying is when people leave what Yahweh says to do and commands, that's what what, what is happening right here. So we see in the today with sodomy, abortion, taking people's money, that's called the Democratic Party. That's all part of this. And we had slavery at one particular time. We've got righteous things going on, but we have real unrighteous things going at the same time. Now we go to Dan, chapter 3, and we're going to see Dan. Daniel, sorry. <laughs> Dan. It's the next book over. Ezekiel Daniel. A what chapter? Chapter 3. Okay. <clears throat> what we're going to see is fidelity is paying a price. 
And when, when, we're, when Yahweh asks us to be faithful unto him, he's telling us it's not going to be the easy road. Are you aware of that? He's, he's telling you, are you willing to take the hard road? The easy road when we get to the new earth. The hard road is going to be living here. But nothing compared to what the other people actually live. So we go to Daniel chapter 3, and we know about somebody called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And let's see if they're going to take the hard road or the easy road. So verse uh, 10 through 12, go ahead and read that, Esther. Okay. <clears throat> Thou thyself, O king, hast made a decree that any man who shall hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the harp, the palmistry, and the bab bagpipes, and all kinds of instruments of music, shall fall down and adore the image of gold. And whosoever shall not fall down and adore shall be cast into the burning furnace of fire. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the businesses of province of Babylon, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men have made thee, O king of no account, thy God. They serve now with the image of gold which thou hast set up in vain our door. So, <coughs> they're not willing to bow. And we're going to be asked to bow too. And we're going to be asked to bow in Christian circles also. So, in, in many times the bowing comes about because of religious ceremony, a religious saying, and this is religious right here, they built a God and you're supposed to bow to it. We're going to see a lot of this is not necessarily from the unbeliever, but it's actually from the believer, the and Christian. Slave. To say, if you're, to going to, if you're going to be a part of our group, you're going to bow. Now we go to uh, verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not accounting it needful concerning this, to answer thee, if it is our Elohim whom we serve is able to deliver us out of the mouth, out of the burning furnace of fire, and out of thy hand, O king, he will deliver. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that thy Elohim will, will we not serve, and the images of gold which thou hast set up will we not adore. Is that good? Something's going, bad's going to happen then when they say that to the king. Mm -hmm. But this is the same thing that we say to many time Christian brothers and sisters when it comes to the Trinity or something like that. And I'm not going to bow to what your creation means. Well, then you're going to be called a heretic. So be it. So be it. Because as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh. I'm not going to bow to your gods. Now we go uh, to Exodus 32, page 115. So Genesis, Exodus. So I'm trying to prepare people. This should all be brought up before a person ever makes Yahushua as their Lord. To say, this is the assignment. As we know, uh, Aaron made a calf of gold, a golden calf, because the people wanted another god. And was Aaron a prophet? Mm -hmm. Yes. Was Aaron bowing? <coughs> yes. Yeah. Sorry to say, so even the best people can bow. But that doesn't mean we bow. So verse 5, And when Aaron saw it, the calf, he built an altar before it, and Haran made proclamation and said, A festival to Yahweh tomorrow. Wouldn't that sound good? Is this a religious ceremony? Yeah. Yes. Oh, they think they're worshiping two gods now, a calf and Yahweh? Yeah. So we got two, we got two gods right now. One we can see, and the other one we can't see. Well, Moses come down out of out of the mountain. Now, was Moses trying to please Yahweh or men? Yahweh. Yahweh. Because Yahweh, look what's going to happen. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse twenty-five. And when Moses saw the people, that unbridled they were. You know what a bridle does to a horse, Esther? Yeah. It makes it turn. Oh, yeah. All right? I control a horse. Would you get on a horse without a bridle? No. And all you have is his hair? How can you stop the horse? Okay. You can't. All right? So Aaron unbridled the people. He gave them a freedom uh, going wild. Freedom to sin. 
Yeah. So 25, and Moses saw the, the people that unbridled they were, for Aharon had given them the rain for a whispering among the nations. His own brother. Remember, Aharon is his brother. So Moses took his stand in the gate of the camp and said, well, let's just accept this. Everybody wants this, right? we got a calf. Yahweh's happy. He'll, he'll be understanding. No, because Yahweh wants true fidelity. There's only one person he wants your 100% faithfulness to, and that's to him. Who is for, and yep, so Moses says, who is for Yahweh to me? And then gather unto him all the sons of Levi. That's why they're so special. And he said to them, Thus saith Yahweh, Elohim of Israel, put you every man his sword upon his thigh, pass through and return from gate to gate in the camp. Now who are we going to have you slay? Go ahead, Go ahead and yeah. slay ye. Every man his brother and every man his friend and every man his neighbor. Whoa. You're going to be told to kill your friend, your brother, your mother, or your father, or your neighbor, if they are against Yahweh. Are you willing to do that? Yes. Yeah, and that's what you have to say, yes. And that's what it comes down to. So the sons of Levi did, according to the word of Moses, and there fell from among the people on that day about 3,000 men. So they killed 3,000 men, put them to death, people who rebelled against Yahweh, and that was family members they put to death. Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to cut the ties and say, when Yahweh says it, you're, you're second, you're out. And if you go against Yahweh, you, you go against me. And that's called fidelity. Uh, <clears throat> Adam was unfaithful. And Adam actually, and Eve actually uh, committed treason, which I didn't realize. I looked at the word treason, and treason actually means uh, to give aid and defense to the enemy and you're going against Yahweh, and the enemy is uh, Satan, the adversary, the serpent within the garden, and so they actually commit not just the sin, they can actually get treated and get aid to the enemy. Well, the enemy said you could do this, and they, okay, we're going to go with the enemy. That's the enemy of Yahweh. And, uh, and so here's what uh, uh, Adam is the one who gave up his fidelity to Yahweh, to who? Satan. Who? Satan. Satan. No, to Eve. Satan. Satan. His wife. Oh. His wife. She was deceived, according to 1 Timothy 2.14, she was deceived, but Adam was not deceived, so he knew what was going on. So she gave to her husband a <clears throat> fruit, also along with her, and he did do what? He ate. That's Genesis 3.6. <clears throat> Adam gave his Eve chose Eve over Yahweh so you can't choose your wife or your husband over Yahweh wow this is really good do you still want to be a Christian so this should be taught you want to be a Christian you want to, you want to take these vows you want, to, you want to go into this covenant because it's not going to be something you like the first commandment is Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5 who wants to say it? Hear, O Israel. Go ahead. Melania. Okay, go ahead. Hear, wow. Israel, Yahweh's Elohim, Yahweh alone. Thou shalt therefore love Yahweh's Elohim with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Yeah. But can you love anybody else with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might? No. 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 So that is the first commandment. Do you want that? This is the test ground. The big stage is going to be uh, the new earth. So 70, 80, 100 years, nothing. I didn't realize the other day, the centurions, there are 78,000 Americans who are 100 or over. People are living a long time. Unrelated. Now we go to Joshua, uh, 257, page 257. What Joshua Judges, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. She's there. She has and that's page chapters. 257, Joshua chapter 24, okay. 14. So Joshua was under the same situation. So we're going to go all the way through here. And we're going to be tried and we're going to be tested. 
because that's what you, that's how Satan, the deceiver, is going to get you. Because he's going to get a brother or a sister or a mother or an aunt or an uncle or a best friend to say, come with me. Come with me. And, and you can have Yahweh too, but come with me. Because we're going to do this other thing that Yahweh says not to do. They're going to pull you away. And you have to say no. So uh, Joshua 24, 14 and 15. Uh, Isaiah 14 and 15. 14 and 15. Now therefore, fear ye Yahweh, and serve him in sincerely and in truth, and put away the God which your fathers served beyond the river, and in Egypt, and serve ye Yahweh. But if be a vexation to your eyes to serve Yahweh, choose ye for yourselves today whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, or beyond the river of the gods of the Amorites, and Whose land you're dwelling, but I and my house will serve Yahweh. Yeah, so he made that. That's it. I don't know where you guys are going. I'm doing it right here. That's called the leader. Now we go to Luke chapter 14, page 77 in the New Testament. Many times we're begging people or we're flowering people. If you say, come Christianity, come in, it's just great. You know, God loves you unconditionally. Jesus is Jesus. And, and what's required of me? Oh, nothing. Just for you to come. Come. Well, wait a minute. Hey, we've got to tell you, the world's going to hate you. Uh, is that going to be a problem? <laughs> what? The world's going to hate you. Did they like Jesus? Did they like Yahushua? No, they murdered him. And what did they do to this guy? This yeah, uh, now you're one of his followers, and you're expecting anything different? Well, I don't know if I want to pay for that price. I don't know if I want to go. I thought this was a free trip, man. <laughs> Keep my sins That's how and do this. Talk, honey. 1425. Uh, what, 14, <coughs> yeah, yeah, chapter Luke 14, verse 25 to 27. Go ahead, Melania. 25. Okay. And there will be journeying together with him many multitudes. <coughs> and running he said unto them, If anyone cometh unto me and hath not his and own father, hateth, hateth, hateth not. Hateth not his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters and further, also even his own life, he cannot be my dis disciple. Whoever beareth not his own cross and cometh after me cannot be my disciple. For who from among you wishing... We'll stop right there. 26, 27. Hmm. How about 16, 13? Chapter 16, verse 13. <clears throat> Do you think people want to be noted as Jesus' friend, Yahushua's friend? No, when everybody was against him and killed him. That's what no. Peter did. Yeah. And so you have to be able to say, huh, are people today bold about Yahweh and about Christ? Many well, times they are not. Some are. But if you look at it as a whole, you know, I go into church parking lots and I see nothing on their car. You know, which is, just always astounds me. That there's, no, there's no identification that you're a Christian on your car. Are you a proud Christian? You know, it's like we said the other day. Could you go into your house? Is there any, any, uh, you know, any uh, manifestations of Christianity in your house? Uh, 1613. No domestic can unto two masters be in service. For either the one he will hate and the other love, or unto the one he will hold and the other despise. You cannot unto Yahweh be in service and unto riches. So it's, it's choose you. Do you want the domestic money? Domestic is a servant, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Riches. Do you, you want the things of this world? Because we know in in uh, 1 John 2, 15 and 16 is, be not loving this world. Because all that's in the world is covering of the flesh and covering of the eyes. And the great grand do of life is not the father, but of the world. Well, that's right. So, yeah, that's right. So we have, we've been told, we got the world, we got... Uh, uh, Yahweh. 
and which one do you want to choose? The party time, you know, or the salvation time. Now you can have a party wherever you are. We're always joyful. Now we go to first Corinthians. But the world is going, Yah, uh, uh, Satan and his enemies working through men, the objective is to deceive us and to pull us away from this book. Yeah. And how they do that is, and the TV is designed to do that. You know, movies can be designed to do that. Radio programs can be designed. I listen to Christian stations, and I came and listened to Christian music stations because of the uh, adultery that is happening with Jesus, because there's no Yahweh. Yahweh's gone. And now, the first commandment is, Hero Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim, Yahweh is one, is gone. They by Christian that. radio stations. Yeah. <clears throat> and does that corrupt young people? Yeah, absolutely yeah. it corrupts, because that's what, well, Jesus is it. Jesus is my God. And they're going to say that. Jesus is my God. Is that corrupt? Is that, is that what we signed up for? Yes, no, uh, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> a trick question. God, yes, no, yes, no. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure what you said. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Jesus, Yahushua, is the son of Yahweh. Not He's our Lord. Our, our, our God is Yahweh. Yahweh is one. Who's second? Yahushua. But Yah they're really the same anymore because whatever the Yahushua will is, our will. But all praises go to Yahweh. Not the same individual. They're father and son. It's a family. They're a father and a son. But Yahweh is, the commandment is to love Yahweh with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, uh, chapter or 6, page uh, 170. Now we'll bring Yahushua into this too. I guess 169, 6 verse 15. So we're in a very blessed time. So one thing I have to say, we can believe what we want to believe and we're not put in prison. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. We, we can not be liked by Christians, in many cases Christians, and unbelievers who want to get rid of Christ altogether, get rid of the Bible. They would love to get rid of the Word. And that's what public schools are about. Do public schools, you know, used to be the Bible was taught in public schools. Can they be taught now? No. And so public schools right now teach uh, sodomy, uh, transgenderism, homosexuality, and, and what is outlawed is his book. Except in two states, now they have. Yeah, yeah, we're we're getting closer. Three states, and wonder, and that's a public school system. Are they against? Yes, they are against Yahweh. And uh, so, fifteen and twenty. Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take away the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Far be it. Or know ye not that he that joined himself unto the harlot is one body? For saith he, the two shall become one flesh. But he that joined himself unto uh, the Lord is one Ruach. Flee fornication. Every sin whatsoever a man shall commit is outside the body. But he that committeth fornication bringeth sin into his own body. Or know you not that your body is a shrine or the Debir, the Holy of Holies, of uh, the Holy Ruach is within you, which you have from Yahweh? And ye are not your own. What's verse 26, or 20 say, Melania? For you have been brought, bought. bought with a price. Therefore glorify Yahweh in your body. You have been bought with a price. So Christ paid a price for us. Is that right? That's, who knows 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. For the love of the Christ constraineth us. In one behalf of all, in behalf of all, die he, in order that they who live no longer themselves shall live, but for him who died in the world. That's right. That's good. And that was it. He died for us, and our job is to live for him. That's called fidelity. That's who I owe my life to. So when somebody says, you want to cheat? You want to do this? Want to do this? Now, when we do blow up, we just confess our sins. 
but we don't lean and leave it. Once you leave it, then you're in, you're in bad trouble. We have forgiveness. Yes, we have so forgiveness on our individual sins because we're all going to sin. But there are instruments that will lead you away so you, you, you are actually leaving Yahweh. And breaking the commandment. So we go it now to Romans 8, page 157. Here's another thing they should teach at the uh, Billy Graham should be teaching. <coughs> should have taught, you know, when you're trying to, to bring people to Christ and tell them the truth. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Chapter 8 of Romans, verse 16. The spirit or ruach itself bears witness together with our ruach that we are children of Yahweh. And if children, heirs also. Wow. Look at that. Heirs indeed of Yahweh, but co-heirs with Christ because he's our brother. Yahweh's our father. Christ is our brother. If, and what does if mean? It's a conditional phrase. In order to be co-heirs with Christ, we're going to have to do something. Together. And Isaiah, what is that? If, if at least. If at least we have suffering together, in order that they who also be glorified together. Okay. For I reckon that unworthy are the sufferings of the present season to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed unto us. What are we told we're going to have to do? Suffer. Suffer! Ah, you want to sign up? <laughs> That's what we signed up for. That's fine. That's good. Why? Because the next verse, what is 18, Ray, Elijah? 18? Yeah. For I reckon that unworthy of the sufferings of the present season to be compared to the glory about to be revealed towards us. Ooh, okay. Big pay. How about the, you know, Elijah's did a teaching on Gideon with that 300. Did they suffer? <clears throat> yeah. Sure, they went battle. Was the payoff pretty good? Yeah. Wow! We beat a hundred thousand men. It was four hundred and four hundred to one against one. And how was that in your record book? But did they suffer? Yes, they did. <clears throat> did Moses suffer? No. Absolutely. People wanted to get rid of him. Did, did Peter suffer? Did Paul suffer? Yes. Did Philip suffer? Stephen. Did Stephen suffer? Yes. I mean, so uh, Nicodemus tried not to suffer. That's why he hid himself. He was ashamed. That'd be me. And so what would happen? Well, what happened is his infidelity occurs because of the opinion of men. And so by doing that, he was drawn away in order to not bear that suffering in this present season because he forgot that the glory as promised far exceeds anything that we could ever suffer. And so we got to keep our eye on that. Uh, John. Four, uh, 15. Let's go to John. Little John? Yes. Which one? Chapter 15. No, which John? John 15. Oh, I say I John. Little John or Big John? No, there's no I, Little that, John. I'm a little John. Wait a minute. That's a Okay, 15, 17 through 25. Okay. Juan, you start, and then Isaiah, you go, and then Elijah, you go. So when you want to start? 15, what? Se yeah, 15, 17 through 25. These things, I, these things I command you that ye be loving one another. If the world is hating you, ye are getting to know that me before you it hath hated. If the world ye had been the world of its own had been fine, but... but it was, if you had been of the world, the world likes you. If you do everything everybody else is doing, hey! Right? Or but. Right? Yeah. So if everybody, if the world's saying you're our bud, guess what? Yeah. You're not in the right place. You're in a bad place. Go ahead. Uh, 18. 18. Just go back with 18. If the world is hating you, you're getting to know that me before you would have hated. If of the world ye had been, the world of its own has me fond. But because of the world ye are not 
On the contrary, I chose you out of the world, therefore the world does hate you. Oh, does what? Hate you. Okay, Isaiah. Remember the word which I spake unto you, a servant is not greater than his Lord. If me thy persecuted, you too they persecuted. Well, wait a minute. Hate is not something I really want. You know what persecuted means? To come after? It's not something I really kind of want either. Suffer? Not something I pray for. I don't pray for suffering and hatred and persecution, do I? I need more suffering. I need more hatred. I need more persecution. But we're being warned, aren't we? Okay, go ahead. My, if the word is kept, your own also will they keep. But all these things would they do unto you on account of my name. Because they know not him that sent me. Go ahead, Isaiah. Elijah. Had I not come and spoken unto them, sin had they, done, had they none. But now have they no excuse for their sin. He that hateth me, hateth my father also. So remember, if somebody hates you, they're hating Christ, and they're hating Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to it. So if you speak the truth, and they hate you, then they're hating Christ, and if they hate Christ, they hate Yahweh. Had I not done among them the works which you know there had done, sin had they none. But now... Have they both seen and hated both me and my father? That's it. We'll stop right there. Oh, we'll go on 25. Okay. <clears throat> but that the word which is in the law is written might be fulfilled. They hated me without cause. Okay. <coughs> Why? Because we're in a dark world. It's just real simple. We've been prepared. We've got to realize that comes. Uh, let's go to Revelation chapter 2, the last book of the Bible. Now, we're not in the book of Revelation, but it's the same scenario. We've got to realize that we're not of the world. We're supposed to be in the world and we're the lights of the world, but we stand strong, fearless, and, let, and it actually encourages other people to come along because you've done it. Well, you're all by yourself, okay, but one, then two, then three, then four, five, and then they can all leave again because of the pressure. I don't want the pressure. I don't want to be on the outside. I want to go to the worship service where everybody's there. I get to see all my friends and be part of the gang. But uh, Revelations 2, 8 through 10. <clears throat> and unto the messenger of the assembly in Samir, uh, Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last who became dead and lived. Who is that? Yahushua. Yahushua. I know thy tribulation and destitution. Nevertheless art rich, and the profane speech from among them who affirm that they themselves are Jews, and they are not, but a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear the things which thou art about to suffer. Lo, the adversary is about to cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and may have tribulation ten days. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. We're not going through this, but become thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. That's called fidelity, faithfulness. Be faithful unto death. He that hath the ear, let him hear what the Ruach is saying unto the assemblies. He that overcometh shall no wise be injured by reason of the second death. And so our adventure is to we have a smile on our face, is we're overcoming, but we've been fully warned. The people are, their attempt is to take us away from what this book says. <coughs> and they've done a very good job of it. So when we come into a society where half the work's already done, now it's homosexuality being accepted. And you would never have thought that, you know, that Christianity would ever get to a place like that. Or same-sex marriage, which is homosexuality, you know, uh, where death is actually celebrated as going to heaven. You know, where you got three gods, but they're not three gods. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. How, we came into this society. What's up with this? Well, we know the Trinity's not in the Bible. And we know God the Son's not in the Bible. We know God the Holy Spirit's not in the Bible. Well, according to the Galatians, it says if anybody adds anything to this, what are they? Accursed. Accursed. Aren't you accursed? Well, we don't believe the Galatians either. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing this stuff. You know, I mean, who's running this show? 
why didn't somebody stand up and say, no, because you will be called what? A heretic. And so that can happen from Christians. And when the world, they'll say, you just don't want to have any fun. And so you're going to a public school, and that's what you've got to shine that light and to show them you're ambassador for Christ. And you can have a lot of fun, but you're not going to get drunk. You're not going to uh, abuse women. I'm not going to have sexual relationship except with my wife, who I marry. I'm going to stay a virgin all my life. That's what Yahweh wants to do. And, and oh my God, you're still a virgin? Like, and I thought, just the wickedness that happens. And it used to be the girls who held the front, and now the girls have been conned to sacrifice themselves because of the magazines and the movies and everything else. That's where you have to watch what we're showing. And actually, they get hurt more than anybody else. Because with the boys, it's recreational half the time. With the girls, it's emotional, and their hearts get ripped out. And then what you have to do is when your life gets so bad, you have to start numbing it because of the condemnation. So what do you need to numb your life? Drugs. Drugs. Alcohol. Drugs. Buying things. Partying. To, to, so I don't think about these things. I don't think about my life. And it just purrs away. Instead of drawing people to Christ, I have been one of the casualties that have been swept away. So we don't have to be that because Yahweh wants us to be faithful to Yahweh and Yahweh only. So we'll stop because there. Because of all the wonderful things that we have coming up. Absolutely. Us. We have a wonderful life. <coughs> Not all bad. Uh, some really good stuff. That's why your parents don't want you going to public school. Yeah, that's, that's why, why you're more mature. Yeah, you know, this is what we're fighting about. The public school is, the, is, is a kind of den of vipers. And as far as the movies and the TV and stuff, it was your mom and dad who really made me see that because they quit having cable in the home and stuff like that. So you ought to say thank you. Yeah, that's right, because there's so much garbage that filters. Yeah. So, and, we, you know, I've done playing myself. And the Lord repent. be a witness to that because now he's out there. Now the we're back. going to hear from our Heavenly Father, First, uh, first Corinthians chapter 14, according to times of interpretation and prophecy. So we thank you. Anybody who feels inspired to speak in times of interpreter prophesy, go ahead. My children, you do not always need to fight <coughs> the things in the world. I want you to fight them a little bit, but you do not always have to fight for people to come to me. Because they will just pull you down and you will just be stuck. My children, come to me. Grab as much people as you can, but you will not be able to grab them all. My children, do not dwell on them because you will start becoming like them. Do not dwell on the evildoers. Hang around the good doers and you will stay good. Amen. <laughs> My children, if someone tells you, they'll give you whatever you want and whatever you need. Do not follow them, my child. For if you come with me, you'll get more than you even know you want. My child, for I know what you want and what you desire. Just tell me, and I will put it with you if you follow me. Amen. My children, stand out in the crowd. If everyone is just... Just walking around, stand out. Don't hide, don't hide in the crowd, out, my children. I want you to stand out. Don't look to the past. Don't look to the left or right. Just keep going forward. And I will put things in front of you that I want you to see. So don't be looking to the past. Don't don't look at the <coughs> far future. Be in the moment. Be in the now. Because I put things right in front of you, and you could be looking 20 years into the future and not even notice it. Oh, Holy speaking. ones, I have set you at this time in this place. My holy ones, where your feet go is holy ground because you have 
the Holy Spirit. And know that if Yahushua is seated on the right hand of me, then so are you. Because you have God in Christ in you. You have the Holy Spirit. So don't, uh, don't deny the, the holy words that I've given you. Don't deny them. Don't cherry pick the parts that you like and the ones that you don't like. Stand firm and study to show yourself approved and know that I will reward you. My sons and daughters, <clears throat> hear my words and let my words bind within you. Uh, seal them in and, and, and make my words as uh, almost as binding as a molecular structure within your body that, uh, that you may make an immunity against those things that come against you. That it, it builds up within your body with my words that are strength and with our, our the power. That it will be a defense against those things that try to attack you. Even those things that are uh, minuscule that try to seep in and, and work their way in. Knowing that as you speak against these things and that you have been immunized against these things. That I will defend you as well. That I will be with you and give guard. I'll speak in tongues and interpret. Yo kuliana eata sata kulia piata mutku ethiliana ea sata abiana utumaku ikiati satemeata kuliana eati sonomayatu kuyata. As you walk in this life and as you put on the ship might, the, the shaw of righteousness, the shield of faith that you put before you, you walk forth as a warrior, as a conqueror, as a Gideon. So put on your sword and walk forth triumphantly because I abide within you and I am a warrior. I am your guide. You shall not fail, but you shall be prosper whereunto I have sent you. So be fearless and courageous, for I am with you and in you. Well, Father, we thank you for these words. Through Christ our Lord. Thank you, Christ. We'll see you next week. We got a birthday cake. That's right.